Okay, I've seen this come up a couple times. Um, folks are, if they move on from their work to home, they're starting to realize that connection um, uh, needs the Arial Unicode font. Uh, Windows no longer provides it. Uh, and if you haven't been putting it somewhere where you can grab it, which technically violates the license, um, you're kind of um, in a bit of a pickle because now you can't use um, a lot of the diacritic -y, um, kind of um, fonts uh, inside your records, at least to be able to display them. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can do this using a different font set. Uh, so the Arial Unicode font um, is a single font. It's a true type font. So there are roughly about 39,000 um, uh, characters that it composes. That roughly breaks down to about 50,000 individual glyphs. So those are the individual images that are inside um, the file. Uh, Google's been working on an open source one. This one um, is called Notu. It's roughly 1.1 gigabytes. I'm not going to download it. I already did, so I'm going to kind of skip some steps. But you would download the font. It's a zip file. And inside that font, um, it covers roughly uh, um, twice to three times at this point the number of characters that the Arial Unicode font covers. The problem is they do it differently. Um, then they do it um, in the Arial Unicode font. So the Arial Unicode font uh, provides the font as a single um, font type, uh, Arial Unicode. The no two fonts work in that it breaks down the individual fonts by language and then uses a single font at the top level for the family. Now, depending on how connection uh, builds the application, Windows uses what's called font inheritance. And so you point to um, the font family and Windows can read all of the fonts within that family down from whatever the branch of the tree is that you're working with. So for no two, the no two fonts, you wanna set your primary font type to be the font type at the, at the um, basically the root of the font. You don't wanna set it for a particular language or otherwise the other languages can't be brought in um, for display. So I'm going to show you kind of how that looks, how that works. And I do have Arial Unicode font on this machine, so I'll flip back and forth so you can see the differences. Uh, so we go ahead and we download it. So I'm going to pretend like I already downloaded it because I did. Um, the font gets dropped into my downloads file. I went ahead and unzipped it. This takes a long time. It's a big font. Um, so you'll see a, a, a mixture of true type fonts, so TTF, as well as what we call open type fonts. Um, they're uh, O, let's see if I can find one, they're OTF fonts. Um, Windows 10 supports both, so here's an example of that. Um, so the difference between the two is roughly, um, uh, one is an open font, one is technically not. Um, the uh, uh, the way that Google's been um, working with their um, partner to do this is they've been creating a mixture of the two. Um, so the way that you install these, you have to install them all, and it's going to take a little while, so I may pause this and jump back into it after it's been after it's been installed, is you go to the Windows font folder. So in Windows 10, let's see, Windows fonts. So we have the Windows Fonts folder. We select all the fonts that we want to install. And I'm going to just, for the speed of things, uncheck that one because it's a text file, it's not a font. And I am going to drag all of those into the fonts. It's going to tell you you can install a couple of them, which is fine. Just go ahead and uh, tell it to uh, not show for the remaining items. It won't install um roughly two or three um for some reason the uh emoji font then there's another font that uh isn't considered compatible um with uh windows 10 but you can see that it's going through and it's installing the individual fonts and the font families as it goes along and it takes a little bit of time so i am going to pause this right here and we'll pick it up after it's gone through the process Okay, so we're back. So just for reference, it took 13 minutes to install 1,600 fonts that make up the no-to font family. Um, so it takes a little while, just as you're, uh, so you're aware. Um, all right, so let's go back to connection. All right, so I have a connection open here. Um, and let me go ahead and grab, let's do tools, options. 
fonts. All right, so right now I have um, MS, uh, the Arial MS font. I'm gonna change these so they're a little bit bigger so that way people can see them. All right, I think 11 would be fine. I couldn't imagine much bigger than that. All right, so cataloging, search my local save file. I prompted, I grabbed a couple files so here we go so what you would expect you can see um, the records you can see the diacritics you would expect that to be the case because we're using the Arial Unicode font I grabbed a couple for that were Greek and I grabbed a couple that were Russian all right so working like I would expect um, but I'm using Arial Unicode so I'm gonna go ahead now and flip to the no two fonts. So the one that you have to select in order for this to work is you need to get uh, the. Uh, oh, well, I guess I'm going to close this. I need to reload the fonts since I had installed while well, I had this open. All right, so close, reopen. Do do do. Tools, options, fonts, and now I need to make sure that I pick up the parent font. And so the parent font for the no two fonts, you're going to want the no two sans. So that's the parent to all of the sand fonts that are in the no two font family and covers roughly 130 languages. So I will go ahead and apply that and close it. Um, and now we will go back to my local save file and look at the items and you'll see again um, the diacritics are showing up in my list and if I open them up you'll see that my diacritics are showing up inside of my records. Includes records that uh, I thought were Greek, as well as Russian. So what's happening here is the actual sans font itself that I've referenced um, only has roughly about 250 characters mapped to it, but it's the family parent to all of the fonts that are part of the sans family. And because the application Windows is using font inheritance, it will traverse down the family tree to find the various elements that belong to that family. So as long as the language belongs to that family, it'll pull into um, the resource. Now, assuming OCLC hasn't done anything crazy inside of connection, you should be able to download that 1.1 gigabyte font, install it onto your Windows 10 system, and use it um, instead of the Arial Unicode font. If you uh, work for an organization, say for example like Ohio State, we keep a copy of the font um, so that when we move machines um, from Windows 7 to Windows 10, uh, that we have a licensed version of the font that we can pass on um, to those machines. Um, it would be uh, in, um, it would it would actually be something we would have to look into if we could actually even give it to people in a uh, um, uh, remote working situation um, because the license is for work um, done at the university. Um, but uh, this is a free font. Um, it should work uh, for you. It's actually the font that I recommend people use for MarkEdit uh, because it does cover um, a much larger language um, Base than the Arial Unicode font, and for reference, the Arial Unicode font is no longer being developed. So, uh, hopefully, that's helpful. Um, if you have questions, you can go ahead and toss them into the um, into the the, the thread here. Um, and if I see them, um, or possibly somebody else sees them, they can try and uh, answer them.